Okay, I hope you guys aren't all Q&A'd out because we have our final round for September, the Patreon questions. So Patreon members have asked questions on Discord and we're now obligated to address them. So hopefully they're all they're all good and sensible because they always are from my yeah, Patreon Yeah, very members. sensible, yep. <laughs> anyway, let's dive into them. All right, first of the questions here. Bit of a long one, so I'm going to try my best to summarise this, but basically this user's got a 3900X, they put in their ASRock B450 Mini ITX motherboard, and they're only going to use it temporarily, but turns out this person's won the silicon lottery a little bit and claims that they can run their CPU 4.3 gigahertz, 1.225 volts, using less power than stock. Um, now, they say they don't see a reason to upgrade because they don't really want PCIe Gen 4. So they say, I was wondering if you think I should still upgrade if I want to use it for as long as possible. And they say their you know, airflow is good, above average for an ITX case. So I think they're wondering, you know, the 3900X getting a bit of an overclock there at low voltage, is that motherboard going to give you a good lifespan for that sort of product? Well, I'd be interested to see how it actually performs. Like It sounds like a pretty aggressive overclock. In with terms that of voltage, voltage yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it may, may be a really good chip, like you say, but I'd be interested to yeah, hear about your, your Cinebench scores. We can perhaps talk about that on Discord later as a follow up. But if it's working, it works. So if the motherboard's not getting excessively hot, the VRMs aren't getting stupidly hot, then yeah, it works. Uh, I'd probably just look into that because sometimes when those things blot, they can damage the CPU. Yep. But yeah, if your VRM temps are fine, then. Yeah. There's no need to upgrade, like you say. Just stick with it. It also comes down to what do you actually do with your PC? Like, if you're just gaming, then it's going to be a non-issue. Uh, if you're not basically stressing all cores and putting it under huge amounts of load for hours on end, then, yeah, it probably won't matter too much what motherboard you use. So, I mean, I found the 3900X worked well on a B350 board with good cooling. Why yep. are you laughing at me? No, I don't know. No, no reason. It's just your face. This guy. Yeah, anyway, I found uh, yeah an ASRock B350 board with, with sufficient airflow over the VRM. It worked fine. All right, Joker, you want to read the next one? Oh, all right. <laughs> Is peanut butter hard to acquire in Australia? I lived there for seven months and couldn't find peanut butter anywhere. What? <laughs> but this was about 11 years ago. This, this question, when I saw it in the channel, I was shocked. Because peanut butter we is have like, extremely available here. It always has been since I've been alive. Yeah, it's, it's and just there's... in the section next to your jams and other things, like your spreads for your... Yeah, but there's so many options yeah, as well. Yeah, there are. It's crazy. I don't know how you could possibly have missed peanut butter in this store. In America, is it ser served in the vegetable section or the nut section or something? Because they do crazy stuff over there. <laughs> Like, you know, the class pizza is a vegetable that one time. <laughs> I think, you know, maybe peanut butter is a vegetable. I so, don't know. Well, yeah. we just have it in the spreads aisle. Yeah, it Like makes you sense. say, with the jams and all that. Oh, anyway. Shocking. Next time you're here, just ask one of the, the shop people. Yeah, where and they'll be like, are you serious? <laughs> it's, in the, it's next to the jams. Anyway. Do you ever feel like people simply don't pay attention to your content? I read a lot of the things people say to and ask you guys. I'm not going to finish that. <laughs> if you watched the last month's Q and A, someone asked this exact same question. Do you ever feel like people simply don't pay attention to your content? Well, we've got another one here. When you build a PC in Australia, do you find it hard to find cases with airflow that makes allowance for cold air rising? Right, cold air rising. Is that how it works down here? Is it? Yeah. Because we're upside down. <laughs> I tried to be serious <laughs> on that one. So that was. A joke from last month as well. Seriously, Patreon members, you're meant to... This is for legitimate Yeah, You're meant question. to be the mature part of our audience. Yeah. Whatever. You're letting us down. Okay. Would you rather have a 3600 with an aftermarket cooler or a 3700X for mostly gaming and light work? Uh, so I assume they're sort of posing this question as they're both the same price. Oh, I think so. Yeah. Uh... As in a 3600 with an aftermarket, because like it's a hundred thirty dollar difference. So you're getting like a good all in one. Well, the 3600s are two hundred dollar. So you're buying a two hundred dollar CPU and then putting a hundred and thirty dollar US cooler on it. Is yeah, that that's what it sounds like? Yeah. Well, in this really bizarre scenario, I'd have the 3700X. Yeah, it's what it's the what same we'll CPU buck, with yeah. two more cores and like a good cooler is like thirty dollars. And it comes with a good box cooler. Well, yeah, it comes with a good so, enough box yeah, cooler. Yeah. Weird question. Stop it, Patreon members. <laughs> 
any chance we'll ever get more recent video to compare top end i7 starting from like the 900 series to the 9000 series so sort of like a generational thing i like those videos yeah, yeah they're really cool but we haven't done one for a while. The kind of the it's it's kind of a like a lull period type. It's an anytime content. You can do it anytime. Yeah. yeah. So now we're like I've just got a massive backlog of products and things I want to do. Like so much stuff I want to do that I just don't have time to get to. So yeah, that's kind of a no products have been released for three to four months. So yeah, it's sort of like your your December January. February type content or the June period just after Computex when the stuff hasn't come out yet. Yep. Um, so yeah, I would like to, I've actually thought about doing that exact uh, content piece though a few times, but yeah, when the time's right, we'll do it. Next one. Show us what's behind the camera. Wink. Um, so we've got a BTS tier for that Yeah, one. we've got a BTS tier. Yeah. So you, you've only paid for the, the uh, Discord tier, so you got to give us, yeah. is it one more dollar? I think it's one more dollar. Uh, yeah. Cough up the one dollar. <laughs> And then I've done a video showing the room we're in now. Then there's the shelves that I built. I think I've provided photos in the Discord chat of me building those, or at least as they were being built. If you're interested in that, let me know. I can post them again, but they're not terribly exciting. But they're pretty cool. They serve the purpose really well. And they took me a few days to build. People are very surprised by how small it is. And then I've showed my benchmark lab, my room upstairs, where I do all my benchmarking. And yeah, I think I've done a few videos up there. Yep. Occasionally film up there, but yeah, and Tim's done the same sort of stuff for his. So I think it's three dollars a month for our BTS stuff, but yep. I only pay that if you're interested. There's yeah. So anyway, <laughs> do you think you might start a YouTube fishing channel when you retire from benchmarking hardware? So that's aimed at me because I love fishing and especially kayak fishing. I think it's bad fishing. <laughs> Steve will get annoyed. <laughs> Pretend Tim's not here for the moment. Um, yeah, I love fishing, but I don't think I would love filming and like worrying about video, audio, especially out on the water. That's a nightmare. No, I look, I, I would retire and just do fishing for the love of it. Relax, enjoy. Um, and there's just so many really good quality fishing channels, which Tim won't be aware of because he's not cultured. I don't even like fish that much. Really? Oh, not, fish not really. is so good. Yeah. Anyway, on that horrible disappointment, let's just move on to the next question. You can read this one out. I'm just going to re recover. Well, so one's apparently aimed at you a little bit. Okay. Have you considered testing Steve's ability to distinguish between a poor calibrated panel and a good one? I wonder where that was going. <laughs> For instance, taking two exactly the same monitors with generally poor out-of-the-box calibration and calibrating one of them. They say simply applying calibration profile to their monitor... Um, resulted in a rather profound change, like I'd never seen a properly calibrated panel before. Um, I find it weird that Steve isn't into panels myself, since they are 75%, at least real science here, <laughs> of the gaming experience. Well, you are making some incorrect assumptions there. I am very much into monitors, but I... Well, we sort of talked about this with like the popularity of Tim's monitor content and why like CPU and GPU content does it does significantly better yep. on our channel. And I think that's my sort of answer to this question ties directly in with that. So obviously I sit on a computer. I don't kind of want to admit how long I sit. I sit on a computer for a very long time each yeah. day, uh, pro probably an unhealthy amount of time. So, and I've been doing this pretty much this job in a written form for the first decade or so, but I've been doing this job and yeah, I know how important the monitor is everything. You can have a great computer if you've got a crap monitor attached to it, then it just spoils the whole experience. So totally agree. I've always just done the easy solution and dumped a crap ton of money on a monitor. So you can go back on TechSpot and see some of my earlier content, which is focused around like triple monitors and stuff. I bought three of the Dell, what are they like the 3007s? I think they were a 3008. So I can't remember, something like that. They were like, they were expensive. I spent pretty much most of all my money on those because, well, A, I don't really pay for computer parts, not bragging, just stating that. Um, and yeah, I wanted good monitors. I know how important they are. So I spent way too much money on monitors. But when you buy a really high end professional grade monitor, because I've always done either photography for taking photos of the computer components for the website or the video stuff, you want professional grade monitors. So I've always spent quite a few thousand dollars on my monitors. 
And when you do that, you kind of don't need to replace it that often. So I was saying yep. to Tim, like the initial uh, Dell, the 1600p, 2560 uh, by, yeah, 1600. It was over a decade ago, I reckon now when I yep. bought quite comfortably over a decade ago when I bought that. And even today, it's still an awesome monitor. The only reason I, I had it when Tim joined the channel, I was still using it. Yep. The only reason I upgraded was because I wanted 4K for video editing. Otherwise, I would be still be using it because it's just an amazing quality monitor. Yep. So... Yes, yeah, so that's why the videos tend, you know, not to do as well as the CPUs and GPUs because you're upgrading those more often than you would have display if you get a really good one. Yeah, there's a good chance you guys, if you've got a decent monitor that you bought over the last few years, you're probably not really thinking about upgrading it. You're probably yeah. thinking more about CPU and GPU. I mean, there's, there's always lots of advancements in monitor tech every year and there's, you know, new resolutions and new refresh rates are always opened up, HDRs opening up, but... If you have got a good monitor, they tend to last, I would say, you'd be hoping for at least five years mm. oh, out yeah. of a good quality one. Absolutely. Um, especially if you're spending thousands like you did. Yep. But as for the calibration stuff, yeah, I'd spot it in a heartbeat. It's just like yeah. spotting a 60 hertz versus 144 hertz monitor. Yeah. It's impossible not to see it. If you know what something that's accurate looks like, especially for things that the human eye is really good at spotting differences in, like skin tones, mm -hmm. if you see a monitor where... You know, your pinks and oranges are like a little bit off and people start looking a bit weird in terms of their skin. You just spot it straight away if you've used a calibrated monitor before. Yeah. Well, the 32-inch IPS panel I now use, the 4K one, you've calibrated that for me. So it's all yeah. it's all nice and ready to go. So that's why uh, hopefully the colors in our videos look pretty well balanced. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got excuses if they're not. Is it just me or are the level of support tiers on Patreon a rather poor business model, particularly for creators who have limited time in the day? Like, wouldn't you want to maximize the value of everyone being $1 supporter since they are literally being a financial supporter and they might represent 0.2% of your subscriber audience? That leaves, you know, the rest completely untapped. You know, talking about the whale strategy, but, you know, take up so little of the ocean, all that sort of thing. Um, so is he sort of suggesting if everyone gave a dollar, we'd make a heap of money I think, on Patreon? I think something like that. I think they're saying, you know, because we offer multiple different tiers and lots of creators offer different tiers and, you know, when you start having to produce benefits for each different tier takes up time. Wouldn't it be better if everyone just signed up at a dollar and got maybe less or something? Um, also, if you sign up for a dollar on the Haran box when you got everything. Yeah, yeah, maybe something like that. Yeah, I mean, we 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 sort of had that initially and didn't really change anything. It's kind of like if you want to support the channel, you support the channel. Yeah, it's it's, meant, they're meant as bonuses, I think, yeah. in my view. It's kind of... you. The reason why you would sign up for something like Patreon is you want to support us and allow us to keep buying hardware that you know either companies don't want to send out for us to test or we want to do more comprehensive testing or you're just a fan and want to keep our business viable that's kind of the main reasons that we have the patreon you know there's some benefits that you get there as well if you're interested to sort of give something back yeah you guys are supporting us directly so yeah i mean the one dollar gets you access to the monthly live stream you can talk with us directly and ask questions live so i mean that's We've always seen the live stream as being one of the bigger perks because you can interact with us. Yep. And, uh, but yeah, I don't really see a problem with, with any of that. Yeah, so. no, it seems fine. Seems people are fine with it. Yep. We, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Steve, do you use the PC that's in your studio? So this big old thing right here, uh, the Corsair Obsidian 1000D. So sadly, no, it's just a really pretty prop piece that took me like a couple of weeks to put together. <laughs> um, yeah, it'd be really good if we could put it to use. But the problem is, for those of you who've seen our BTS videos, because you pay for that tier on Patreon, uh, this room sort of goes like a meter and a half past Tim and about two meters that way. And then it's four meters deep. And it's really not big enough to do what I do. Like, there's so many more things I would like to do when it comes to filming B-roll and stuff like that, but I just, I don't have the room to put things in here to use. So I'm extremely limited in this space at the moment. I'd love to hang a few monitors off this over here that we can use for live streaming. That was kind of the intention, but I just don't have the space to have all that stuff in here. So yeah, it's a, it's a set prop. It's just something that looks interesting in the background. Uh, I'm hoping relatively soon in the next year to build sort of my dream studio and then the set piece would actually become a workable pc that i would use so anyway yep. well this is a, a sort of an interesting question so i don't really know what you'll add to it but yep. I'll, I'll pass Go it ahead. off to you first with youtube's changes coming in would you say your youtube channel is kid friendly 
It's very important to be kid friendly on YouTube these days, wouldn't you say? Um, well, I mean, what makes them like we're not dropping f bombs or? I don't see why we wouldn't be kid friendly. I yeah. mean, kids aren't watching these videos. We know for a fact that kids don't watch well, these videos. Well, <laughs> very low percentage of below eighteen on our channel compared to most. Sh- well, yeah, sure, but I mean, you don't. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much. I think that. Well, part of those stats is kind of wrong because you have to be a certain age, and so people just sort of falsify Budget. that yeah, information yeah, right. but i will just quickly say i'll try not to again rattle on for too long but the first fan i ever met when i was just out and about walking around, i think we only had like one hundred and fifty thousand subscribers and yes yeah, someone recognized me on the street which was bizarre and it was a mum with her daughter and they were fans of the channel and her daughter i think she said was grade five Grade five or grade six, yeah. Well, they were both in the PC tech, and yep. where, where Aussie's doing that, so they watched the channel. It was kind of the first time I was like, well, it's probably a good thing we don't do a lot of swearing, which I kind of think is unnecessary for what we do anyway. Um, yeah, and like my kids, my daughter loves the unboxing boxes. I don't know why, but she <laughs> loves watching it. And yeah, so at least they can watch that, and we're not, you know, dropping f bombs and <laughs> sort of. So anyway, that that's that. But I think it's. I think it's family-friendly content. Yep. If you're a whole bunch of nerds and you love computer gear like us, then yeah, it's, yep. it'll, it'll work. All right, Steve, very important benchmarking question. Will oh, you start benchmarking these. Minesweeper for CPU releases going forward to ensure Intel real-world testing compliance? Yes, I think we will. So I was going to run this by our viewers, but I don't think we're going to need to. They'll no, 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 they'll agree. They'll agree. Let yeah. me know, Paul. So we're going to drop Cinebench and bring in Minesweeper. Yeah, and I'd recommend so. as well uh, 3D Space Cadet, the pinball from Windows oh, XP. Okay. You might need to go back and reinstall you, Windows XP. but Okay, you really very, want to revamp our testing that much? Yeah, I, mean, okay. I think that's a really heavy multi-threaded benchmark. Okay. With the, you, know, you can get multi-ball in that game, so each right. each ball is a core. So there's some of the uh, changes we'll be making throughout later in the year for Hardware yep. Unbox. I might try and implement them by the 39, uh, 3950X review. All right, next up, we have the Intel survey states that only 36% of people using laptops use Chrome. Don't you think that is a bit low? For default, laptops slash uh, portables, uh, wouldn't Edge be the top performing browser? Or, you know, brow- yeah, that's basically it. If Chrome isn't, uh, even though Firefox is the best, duh. Um, I wouldn't say, I mean, I think it probably is slightly too low. I'd say Chrome is... General market share is probably over 50%. I wouldn't have a clue. But, yeah, I mean, not sure. We're not browser marketing experts. I've never really researched it. No, yeah. I don't know where you get that information. I suppose 36% seems a bit low because I use Chrome, you use Chrome. Most of the people I know use yeah, Chrome. Most well, of the browser Chrome. benchmarks, you know, not browser benchmarks, but market share numbers always had Chrome. Yeah. At least in the past few years, be like very popular. I use Chrome 50. and Firefox, and I sort of go back yeah. and forth. I definitely don't use Edge. No, you know, that you is the default. Throw that in the bin. Um, <laughs> I love when you click and you try every time you do a new Windows install, and you go, "All right, I got to change oh, it." Stupid. It gets so cut. And, doesn't yeah, it? <laughs> it's like, are you sure you want to switch? And it even changes that. Like nowhere else in Windows is there a blue button for no, and then like a white one for yes. Like they're just trying to convince you or fool you into not changing it. And if you Google Chrome in Edge on Bing, it like puts up about how Edge is so much faster and it's like, okay, great, but Chrome has all the features I want, so, yeah. Gold. As people that play video games, what do the two of you think about subscription services like Xbox Game Pass, Origin Access, and Uplay Plus? This is a big topic in our Discord a couple of weeks ago Mm. in terms of the the subscription services. I think both of our opinions are pretty similar. They're okay, Yeah, but personally, I like to own my games. I... Like, or as own them as you can own them. Yeah, as own them as you can own them. I mean, I, I, I've i never liked the idea of when your subscription service runs out, you don't want to pay for it anymore, you just lose access to all those games. It, like, I'm more than happy to pay for the games and just have access to them I think for it, the foreseeable future, even if it's worse value. I, yeah, I wonder if that's more of a classic or you know a traditional approach to gaming. I don't know. I've thought about this a bit. I can certainly see the benefits because it's a small upfront cost and you do get a big game library so it's definitely not bad like we say we both think it's okay it just isn't necessarily for us though i do have uh, origin access um and, and game pass it really depends on the type of game you are if you're someone that just likes to sort of sample through everything like you know yeah. the kids that used to get like all the different console games and just not really fixate on one whereas i have always sort of liked to get one game and really play it and really get into it 
Um, mm. So, yeah, it just really just depends on how you approach PC gaming and what you like, or just gaming in general. Like, do you like to browse think, and play a bit of everything? I think as well, there's a bit of hesitation from sort of the Netflix model, where, you know, you do get your subscriptions, got all the things included, but sometimes the licensing deal runs out for the content, mm. and then that you know, that title is gone and you yeah. can't you can't watch that or play that in the case of a subscription service. I'm not sure whether that's happened and I wouldn't think that for something like Origin or Uplay, the first party titles will ever leave. But certainly if you, if you subscribe to something like Game Pass, which has a lot of third party content in it, you know, what if suddenly Metro Exodus isn't licensed anymore? Like I you- get what you're saying and yeah, I agree, but it's kind of like a cheap way of getting to play the full game yeah, and like some of those games, like you don't really want to replay them once you're finished anyway. Yeah. So that makes sense for them. But if there's a game that you really do want to play and it gets dropped from the service, at least you know that it's worth spending that money to get the game. Yep. So I think I'd be so for subscription services if there was like one service that had all the games on. Oh it. yeah. Even if it was really expensive. Yeah. Like hundreds of dollars a year. Or, yeah. Then I think that would be like amazing. Be convenient for benchmarking. Yeah, it would. Um, but if there's sort of like you have to as long subscribe as it's not run to, by EA. Well, yeah, that'd be bad. But in the current state, we have to subscribe to like a little bit here and there and sort of dabble around. That's right. Just not for me at the moment. Yeah, and well, then it d- does become quite expensive when you're paying for multiple subscription services. Yep. Anyway, how long do you think until a CPU comes out that beats the 1900K in games? And have you considered doing a video on CPUs for esports titles, uh, competitive in-game settings aimed at 240Hz 1080p? So for the esports thing, we have done a couple of videos on that. Not They haven't been super popular with our audience, uh, the esports type titles. But yeah, we yeah that's sort of stuff we have done. Um, and then as for like a CPU to beat the 1900K in games, it's kind of like... Well, the 9900KS will do it, but it's the same CPU. Uh, Even that's questionable because it's only increasing the all-core frequency. Oh, no, it'll, it'll, it'll be faster in games. Um, yeah. All right. Well, it's just like saying when you overclock the 9900K yeah, to 5 gigahertz, it's 5% faster. It's like, whoa. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, going... it needs more frequency to get faster. Yeah, it's going to be bugger all faster, but it will be faster. Yeah, when a CPU will beat it by a good margin, it's probably going to be a while down the road because even if a CPU does beat it now, it's going to be like, yeah, it beats it some places, but they're pretty much the same. I think I said it earlier in one of the other Q&As, like the 3900X, well, you can even say that about the 3800X, the 3700X, they're all so close to the 1900K in pretty much all games. Some games like CSGO, they're a smidgen faster, but they're so close, doesn't matter. Like if you're playing, you're mostly GPU bound in games, so... Yeah, they're all fast gaming CPUs. But we keep using the 900K for our GPU test rig because it is. It, it, it holds the performance crown. So, Yep. Question for both of you. Steve and Tim, I expect you may have different answers. We agree mm. on very few things, so a good <laughs> ch- uh, When you build a new personal system, whether it be for gaming, editing, or just a general daily driver, how much time do you spend tuning the system to your liking Besides just installing drivers, Firefox, Adobe, etc., compared to how you would uh, get a new test rig up and running for new graphics drivers or BIOS or whatever it's released, um, there's not too much difference really. Um, yeah, I don't spend too long doing that kind of stuff. I well, if you talk sort of talking about the the tuning, tweaking kind of thing, I don't really overclock my. I definitely don't overclock my editing rig. I don't really overclock my personal sort of gaming system, mainly because it's just not in my opinion, worth it anymore. Um, They're pretty much getting maximum performance out of the box. So I haven't really done any serious overclocking since probably about the Sandy Bridge days. Um, Yeah, and then it's just, I have a a set of applications that I install and use and a lot of stuff's cloud-based these days. So there's not too much of that reconfiguring. It's obviously like email clients important for me. Um, Adobe Premiere. (laughs) All the stuff we use. Uh, but yeah, compared to like a test system, it's the same sort of thing, really. It's a clean install, install the necessary games and applications for benchmarking, necessary drivers, make sure the BIOS is up to date, make sure Windows is up to date, all that sort of stuff. So quite similar. Yep. Anything to add to that? Uh, pretty similar. I mean, I don't overclock my system as well. I sometimes do GPU overclocking, just depending on what I'm running at the time, just because usually you just click one button and it's all... 
yeah, all okay. good to go if you've got a profile set up. But as for like tweaking memory or anything, you know, changing timings and all that, never bother with that. Um, as long as it's running, you know, the basic XMP stuff, then yeah, I have usually good to go. On my Ryzen system, yeah, I probably should have added that. I did tune the memory because that boosts performance quite significantly. But it's not frequency, just the timings. Yep. Um, I did that sort of out of interest. Yeah, it's, it doesn't really change everything yep. too drastically, but when you are CPU bound, it can make a bit of a difference there. So yeah, that's that. Yep. All right, long question here. Seems there's a couple of parts, so let's let's get through it. Hi, Stephen. Tim, please shed some light on why AMD chose to reveal Zen 3 so early, one year ahead of time. Also, why is Zen 3 rather than Zen 2 Plus? Are they really that confident? Then next part, about the upcoming 16-core 3950X, if AMD is truly boosting to 4.7 gigahertz with BIOS updates and all that, um, do you think it should stand a chance to dethrone the 9900K in gaming? And given nowadays the price slash power consumption are basically the same among most dual fan cards versus triple fan ones, is it a no-brainer to only go for those triple fan cards? So I think we've, we've already said that the 3950X probably won't beat the 9900K in games. Yep, so we've, that's that. we've covered that. Well, we don't, yeah, we don't think so. For the roadmap, yeah, I mean... Well, I think that's what he's talking about as a roadmap. Yeah, I That's mean, all they've revealed, isn't it? Yeah, they've just said there's names and 3 I mean, companies release their roadmap names and stuff pretty early on. I mean, even Intel does it by talking about Ice Lake and, you know, all those sort of things generally quite early compared to the releases. So that's just another one of those. Yeah, I don't what, think it speaks to confidence or anything. I don't think yeah. it means... It, it may indicate that it's going to be a bit more drastic than just a plus increment, like a refresh type thing. Yeah. But I wouldn't read too much into it. Like Tim says, it's just a code name. Yeah. I mean, maybe it is just Zen 2 Plus. They just call it Zen 3 because they can and want to. I mean, that's <laughs> one of the things they could do. Who knows? And then, yeah, the triple fan thing, it's like, yeah, triple fans are usually better than dual fan cards, but don't just buy a car because it has three fans. Like, if it has a garbage heat sink, then it's not going to be better than a dual fan card with a really good heat sink. So... Watch your reviews, read your reviews, make sure you do your research, and yeah, that's that yep. one. Siles asked us questions for you, you and me, so okay. I'll ask you your part. Do you think slash hope more developers will adopt a dynamic resolution approach as well implemented and thought out as one the coalition have put into Gears 5, and do you think it should become a standard feature for every single game? <laughs> so what's your thoughts on dynamic resolution? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I haven't played around with it a huge amount, but you have, so I've seen your video, and yeah, it seems really cool. I'd like to see it in more games. I'll, I mean, yeah, the answer is yes, but that's obviously wishful thinking. Um, we may see a bit more of it. But yeah, I think we'll see a bit more of it. I guess it just depends on you know, how much time game developers have into making these features run really well. It seems like something that would need a fair bit of optimization work. But I'd... Yes, and there's obviously a few stuttering issues with it in Gears 5 as it is. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think that there needs to be some optimization work, but it should become more of a thing, I think, for PC gaming, especially for high resolution, because it works really well there as opposed to 1080p where it's not quite as good. Yeah, I mean, it just depends how much developer time it takes to implement and optimize yep. and get working. If it is quite... I imagine it would be quite difficult to do yeah which is why not many games have done it yeah so i would done it well. I, I wouldn't expect to see a whole lot of it in the future but yep yeah and the next part here what do you think about usb 4 implementing the thunderbolt 3 spec as standard in terms of what that might do for monitors and eGPUs in the future um i mean if it's just thunderbolt 3 in usb 4 which it sounds like i don't think we'll get too much of a gain on the eGPU side because if there's no improvements to bandwidth or latency then there's not going to be much of a gain with eGPUs. i know some people really like eGPUs. i still think they're kind of crap so i don't think that'll improve until you know we get maybe usb 5 that will take thunderbolt to the next level and for monitors yeah i mean usb already supports like you know you can run a, a USB to HDMI dongle fairly easily if you want. I guess it'll make it a bit easier for some people to get monitors running through a single cable. Um, but really, it's just good to see those things getting innovated and Thunderbolt 3 becoming a more widespread thing, as it will be once it comes into USB 4. I think that's only going to be a good thing. Mm -hmm. All right, this user wants a bit of a monitor recommendation, so let's go into it. Is he paying for the I get to ask three questions tier in the Q&A? Oh, or not? buddy, hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so they want something 120, 144 hertz, IPS, 1440p. Don't mind paying a bit extra for high quality. They 
have a 1080 thinking getting a 2080 Ti or big Navi. Um, so G-Sync's fine, FreeSync if they want to go Navi. So their question's up. Okay. In the 27-inch territory, I've been looking at the LG 27G L850. And in your review, you recommend it over the Aorus Tactical Monitor. But would you also recommend it over the Asus and Acer uh, offerings in the similarly spec range? Uh, quick answer to that, yes, because it's using a new panel. So it's it's both an affordable monitor, so they're not charging a super high premium for their new technology. Um, and it's just, they've basically got an exclusive on that panel for now. So for now, yes, um, the LG option is better than any of the other ones. In the 21.9 territory, I've considered the 34GK950F, which is around 1,200 euros. And there's also the Alienware model, 1050 euros. In theory, FreeSync would be better, but that's not necessarily a deal breaker. And I'd be happy with either 120 or 144 hertz. Would you recommend one of these or is there another one to consider? Um, so the panel that comes with the Alienware model, I haven't reviewed that exact monitor, but I've reviewed the Acer Predator X34P, which I believe is the same one. Um, the 34GK950F has a better panel than that. So um, simply put, if your money isn't too much of an issue and you're willing to spend that extra amount, then go for that. But really, it's that Alienware model is a pretty good price if you're saving 150 euros, considering it's pretty similar. So yeah, I'd go either way there, depending on whether you want the best of the best or something a bit better value. And as for 16.9 versus 21.9, which is your final question, it's a personal preference thing, I would have thought. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a 21.9 guy for gaming, but 16.9, I can see the appeal for that too. So it's no real. I'm a 16.10 guy. Yeah, six, underrated 16.10. It should That's make what, a comeback. That Dell monitor I was talking about, yeah. that was 16.10. So good. I loved it. I don't know why they got rid of it. Yeah. So good for desktop PCs. Yep. That uh, vertical viewing was awesome. Okay, well, thanks for watching part three of the September Q&A series. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. There were quite a few interesting, different questions, sort of a yeah, wide range of questions this month, which is good to yeah, see. it's nice. So I thought it was going to be all about the 3950X, but unfortunately, nope. <laughs> no, no 3950X for a little bit. But anyway, there's plenty of other benchmark content coming up on the channels, a few comparisons I want to make, a few GPU things I want to do. Tim has quite a few interesting content pieces lined up, so... Yeah, we'll be getting back into, well, News Corner tomorrow. Yep. yep. And I think, uh, what have we got after that? Oh, there's monitor testing. You're doing monitor more testing. GPU testing. I've got a GPU test coming Some up. more games Grab coming stuff. out, so there'll be more, yeah. more testing of that stuff. U usual stuff. But anyway, thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. I'm your host, Tim. And we will see you... Next again. time. Yeah, ne <laughs> I yep. got in too early for you. <laughs>